Chapter 1. LSD It was 6 p.m. when I dropped the acid. Tonight is the party everyone has been raving about, and I am ready to go. I have my pack of cigarettes in my clutch, and all my makeup has been applied. I'm just waiting for Sheila to arrive. I'm surprised she's coming with. It's out of the ordinary for her. Sheila doesn't do drugs. That's not to say she doesn't get high. She sniffs paint fumes and has plenty of experience with hallucinations. She's an artist, too, and I guess this is her way of tapping into that subliminal sphere of creativity. On the outside, she draws flowers and motorcycles. But if you see her inner side of her sketchbooks, you'll see all kinds of crazy demonic characters. She arrives at least an hour late, as expected. We drive across town and make our gentle appearance to the crowds. Everyone knows who I am here. I have a sort of isolated fame, specific to certain crowds, I guess you could say. I'm an artist, and everyone here knows my work. My digital collage is what people recognize me most for, but I also create handmade paintings and make what we call asemic writings. In my mind, this is something akin to having a child write in a language they don't know the rules for, but they kind of mimic the language in their own unique way when they write it out. It is more about form than function, and the term asemic means that there is no inherent meaning in the text. I've been creating asemic texts for the past six years now. I've brought a drawing pad. I always draw when I'm tripping on LSD, and tonight will be no different, regardless of the fact that I'm in the middle of a rave. The rave. I remember who is going to be here, and my heart sinks. It's been three days since we broke up, Kevin and I, and really he's the last one I want to see. To be precise, I broke up with him, but it's not that I didn't want to be with him anymore. He just wasn't giving me the attention I felt like I deserved. He was always avoiding me, in fact, or at least that's how it made me feel. Michael is taking admission fees, and I give him what he needs for both myself and Sheila. We enter. There are so many neon lights, and the room is so dim you can barely see anything. I sit with Sheila against the wall, at which point she starts in on the Mormon thing she does. I don't know why she fills her head up with this religious stuff, but it always irritates the hell out of me. The trip is really starting to kick in, and I don't need this background noise of her religious banter. It's enough I have such a heartache to contend with, and I don't need anything else dragging me out of my high. That's when I feel it, in the midst of our dialogue, or rather Sheila's monologue. I feel the presence of something very dark, something sinister, something unmistakably purely evil. It feels as though the raw force of spiritual gravity is shifting, and as though someone were entering the room. We have to go, I find myself saying to Sheila. I get up, dust off my butt from sitting on the floor and against the wall, and make my way quickly out the door. This isn't my first spiritual experience LSD has triggered, but I think it may just be the last.